Hello viewers, welcome to QuickBooks 2016. My name is Charles. We are working through module 2 right now and this is the getting started module. In this video number 5, I want to show you how to identify the components of the QuickBooks C environment. That's video number five, that is about identifying the components of QuickBooks environment. It's going to make working in QuickBooks a lot easier if you know where to go when you are ready to do a specific task. Let's head over to QuickBooks and I will get you familiar with the home screen and show you how everything is set up and where you want to go when you are looking for, for that one thing that you are ready to do on QuickBooks. So we are in our home screen, as we've said. That is the home screen. And now we want, to, we want to identify the items. And we see where you should be able to go when you want to perform something in QuickBooks. In other words, we are, we are kind of looking at the features the different features that we have within QuickBooks. We are going to highlight a few that can be the very basic one that could help you get to where you want to go. So this is our home page in QuickBooks. The whole of this, as you're seeing, this is the home page. And this is like a starting point for almost everything you will do or you will want to do in QuickBooks when you are using QuickBooks. You will notice that your home screen is divided into sections. There is a section right up here called vendor section. These are vendors. That is the vendor section. And this is what we call the accounts, accounts payable or the suppliers. Anything having to do with bills that the company receive that they have to pay will be located in that section. So everything that is going to go around with what the company is going to pay in terms of the bills any person we are going to be paying, any suppliers who have supplied anything to the organization, we go to the vendor section. This is the vendor section. That is one of our first section that we have in QuickBooks, vendor section, or what we call the accounts payables. They call them accounts payables because these are the people who are going to be demanding the organization if at all we haven't paid them and if we are still having their money we call them accounts payable so this middle middle part here you are seeing because this is the this is, the whole of this is a section you are seeing there is a line that cross that that separates this side from this side this side is what we call the customer section, the middle section here is what we call the customer section or what we call the accounts receivable section. In other words, the accounts receivable sections, these are going to be our clients. They, 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 they are going to become accounts receivable because we may give some of those on we may supply maybe our services to them on credit and 
when they are when we are demanding them as, as an organization we are demanding our customers they become the accounts receivable so the customer the or the customer section is going to be showing everything to do with our clients so and we've said that these customers those are the very people who are going to be buying the the company products or services and everything that is going to be connecting all those customers from the time they are taking goods from the to the time they are paying for the goods they have taken everything is going to be within this section the middle section So that's the customer section. And we are, when you try to look at this customer section, it has so many icons in this area. We are seeing there is estimates, invoice, statements, charges, statements, receive payments, everything. There are very many icons that are within this middle part. It means we are going to spend a lot of time in that section. Then the, 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 the one at the, at the bottom, the last section on the bottom, we have the employees. This is the bottom left because these are also on the left, but this is the, this last part, the bottom left, which, which is the employees. This is where your payroll is going to be located. located. In other words, anything, that is going to be dealing with employees is going to be in this section. So we are going to be handling payroll for, for, for the employees. Then we are seeing there is, there is another section over here where it says company here. This is the company section, the top right corner this is the company section these are some of the options that do what that have to do with what in other words they are, they are basically looking at the at, at, at the company itself the company's file itself and not necessarily customers or vendors for example we need to get really, really, really familiar with the charts of accounts. We have to, very, to be familiar with the charts of accounts right here. And these charts of accounts, they are within the company section in QuickBooks. Because that's one of the most important things that we need to understand in QuickBooks the charts of accounts. We shall look at a video that is going to be handling that charts of accounts, but for now, you need to be familiar with it because we are going to be using it more often. The reason as why we, are, we need to be careful on these charts of accounts is that we need to make sure that at least we are setting up these accounts correctly. Even though we are not going to be setting accounts here, we shall look at setting up accounts or charts of account, chat, setting up our accounts in that charts of accounts, which I we shall have a video that is going to be detailing that. But we have to just know that charts of accounts, they are located in the company section of our home page. You, you, you also have an option here for items. These are some of the things that are within the company section. We have items and items and services. Those are going to be things that your company sells 
and sometimes what they purchase. So some of your options here are going to be things you want. Some of the options here that we have here, they are going to be things that we may not use. For example, we have return on time. We have certain certain things of tracking time. These are things that we may not be able to use because part of those services, QuickBooks, offer them separately. So we may not be able to use that because they pay for you can pay for it to be able to do inventory to do inventory tracking. Inventory tracking, then there is also return on time tracking, and there are so many things. Because you may find in, 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 in our business, we are not using time, we are not tracking time when you are doing the business. In other words, we, we can just have some of those things, we just know them, but we just, we just, we are not going to use some of them because we will say time tracking has to do with the job costing and all that. So over here, we may not be able to do some of those. There is what we call check order. We can be able to order checks. We have, we can be able to, to order checks. We can be able to order tax forms if you want from QuickBooks. So, but most of the times we don't need to order checks from from QuickBooks. We shall see how we, how we will be able to write checks. And writing checks is down here in this section. So most of the time is because ordering these checks, that's also a service that QuickBooks provides. But some of those services, they are not for free. They come as an additional thing. So some of those things, we may not do them here, but I just want to show you where they are, if at all you want to have a look at them, because it will be very easy for someone to know that if I'm, if, if I'm looking for charts of accounts, I'm going to look at it, the company section. It will be very, easy for, very easier for someone to just locate that, because you'll be knowing where to find certain things if you want to, to do certain task. So, which we, we 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 can actually we can actually go to the last, the last option, or the last section, which is the banking section. Here we have also calendar, but most of the times we may not use even the, the, this calendar. Within within still within our company section, we have a calendar. Some of the things we may not use them because at you find someone someone you you have. You have already a calendar with the, the one that comes with this Outlook, Microsoft Outlook, and other things. So you may be using a lot of, you may be have, having access and you may not be able to actually go deeper into the calendar thing. So when you go to the last section, that is, that is what we call the banking section. If you think about things that you will do to do at the bank, you can actually record the deposits. You, you actually maybe look at your checking register. You can actually write checks because those are some of the things that we actually do when you go to the bank. But some of those things we can do them right here in QuickBooks. So I just want to show you some of the things that we have and we can be able to, to, to navigate when, when, when we want to do a, a given task. So those are the things that are actually considered for the banking section or the banking function in QuickBooks. And that's why all those are grouped 
under the banking section because most of the things that you are seeing here record deposits reconcile write checks check the, 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 the register all those things they are done print checks they all they are all they are all are done in the bank so those are some of the activities that we actually do in the bank so So we've seen that we have our accounts accounts payables up here as the first section. We have our accounts receivables here in the second or the middle section. We have our payroll service here down to employee section. We have our company information and also we have our banking information. And those are the five sections on the QuickBooks home screen. The other thing I want, I want you to note that is really important every time that, the, the, that is very important for you to actually notice is that we are seeing that every time we go on a different section, we are seeing we have what we call the flow charts. We are seeing that everything is set up in a flow chart. When you look at enter bills, like for example here, you are seeing that there is an arrow that follows the, that that follows that flow chart over to the next thing. And if you, when you enter, when you, when you look at enter bills here, and and you follow the flow the flow chart over to the next item, it tells you QuickBooks tells you to pay because the, the, this arrow goes up to pay bills. It doesn't say maybe go down and write checks. You can't say I've entered the, I've entered the bill. Now I'm crossing over to write check here. No, you are supposed to follow this the same way these lines are moving. It is the same way you are supposed to 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 to, to operate when you are using QuickBooks Desktop. Remember, we said with the QuickBooks Online these these sections they are not there so you need to be knowing what you are supposed to do you can't just come here and enter bills and you go to write check it's not how it's done you're supposed to follow these those items and those will be taking you to the respective options so be careful that's very important not seeing that it is in a flow chart it gives you an arrow that if I, if you start from here like look if if you look at estimates there is an arrow that comes from create invoice we say an estimate can be a bid a proposal or any job if you have a job and maybe or you have a proposal of course, when you have a proposal, you submit what you, what you do next. You submit an invoice. Maybe the customer was willing and the customer has actually pressed an order. You had submitted a proposal and the, 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 the people are actually accepting your proposal and they are buying. So what you do, you send them an, you send them an invoice. In other words, that invoice is going to be in a form of a quotation. Because when you have a proposal, you send a quotation. When the people, they have agreed, you, have, you go ahead and issue them with a quotation, with the invoice. So those are some of the things that we actually need to notify from our home screen.
So I've made it clear that we need to be able to follow that flow chart. We need to follow that flow chart all the way to the end so that we can be able to record the right information or we record in the right way. When you look at now the customers, for example, some some of you, as I said, you may estimate jobs that have we have submitted a bid and we expect we are going to win the bid and we get a customer. If let's say you've been you've been in it, it has been an accounting firm or an auditing firm, you have you have you have submitted your bid and you expect maybe you may go through and you'll be able to to get the job and you get a client. So that's why we are seeing the estimate is within the customer section. It's not in the vendor section because it has a lot of things to do with it. Acquiring customers. As I said, when you have an invoice, when, 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 when you have estimates, the next thing to do is to create to create an invoice. You directly create an invoice. After creating an invoice, then we expect the customer to pay. When the customer pays that invoice, you are receiving money. We are receiving payment. And when we receive the payment, or when the customer pays, then you have to put that money in the bank. That's why you are seeing from, from receive payment, it goes to record deposits. Meaning we are putting the money in the bank. So make sure you follow this all the way to the end even though it appears it is crossing over to the next section as long as the the the, the, the arrow is pointing there that's the next thing to to do so we are seeing that to record deposits from the customers we are crossing over to the banking section it is okay as long as the flow tells you that way that's what we are supposed to follow because that's also part of the flow chart the other thing i want you to point out is that there might be some icons that are missing or you might see some or maybe you you you, you may be working with a colleague and you find that the way they are home screen or their home page screen looks like there are some icons that are different from what your icons are on your before on your other computer if that happens please don't worry because there are some icons that may disappear you may find that on some on 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 one's screen home screen you may not be seeing purchase orders you may not be seeing receive inventory for example, in the vendors, in the vendor section, you may look at this vendor section and you see someone, your colleague doesn't have the purchase orders, don't think they have made a mistake. Because the, the, the reason as to why that comes is because those options, they are supposed to be turned on and off by QuickBooks itself. How those icons, the way they come in, is 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 depending on how we answered the questions that we did under our is a step interview of setting up the company. So that's why we were very 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 detailed in in, in in handling the easy step interview because it could that the, that is a step interview was determining the icons that you are going to be having here 
Because if at all you didn't turn up, you, you said you were not going to use estimates, you wouldn't be having estimate here as an option. So some of the things they may be, they may be there and some may not be there. Don't get scared. It is just some people, they just set their settings or they just answer those questions in a different way. That's why we have to be very careful and we understand the company that we are working on in that process of creating the is the, the easy step interview. But don't worry, if those, they are not reflecting, we have a way of how we can be able to, to set them up or to make them appear on your computer. But we shall do that in a later, in a later module, we shall look at that later, of how we can turn on and off some of the icons. We shall talk about those when we are, talking about the preferences. But for now, just know that those icons may disappear depending on how someone answered the, the questions that QuickBooks asked in the Easy Step interview. Now, I want to tell you one more thing. Notice that the, there, is, there is an Insight tab here, Insights tab, right here. This is the home, this is our home page, and this is the Insights tab. When you click on the Insights tab, it, right now it is empty. We are seeing there is nothing that is, that is reflecting there. But I want you to get familiar with it. Because I want you to, it's like the way we are seeing the, the, these Excel dashboards, the way they look like. We want also to be familiar with this. This is our home screen, but we have also the inside screen. What is the role of that? What is it showing us in terms of the company that we were working on. Because now, when you click on that Insights tab, once you have some data, or once we have put in some information here in our company, because we haven't registered, we haven't recorded any transaction in our company. But once we do that, you'll be able to see some figures. In other words, this Insights screen, it will, It will, it will enable us to see the profit and loss. It's, it, it's actually giving us the screenshot of the, of, of the, of the company's statement, financial statements. In other words, it gives us how well the company is in terms of the transactions we've entered. It, it will be able to show us the profit and loss accounts it will be showing us everything that we need to know from from the time we've selected to respective times that we may select but that's what that, that's basically what it shows it is just giving us it's just helping helping us to see a profit or a loss of that company so you'll be able to see some information about your incomes. You'll have any invoice, invoice, invoices, any invoices that are not yet paid, you'll be able to see them. There are so many things that you'll be able to see from that point. We shall also be seeing the, the those accounts payables that are still overdue, that maybe they have passed 30 days, we've not cleared them. You may be able to see some of the expenses. So we shall be seeing some of the things right over there. It is just giving us a screenshot of how our company is performing in terms of the incomes, the expenses, and other things that we have not actually cleared. So make sure 
that once you get some data in here, you come back and check on these insights. If we put in some, some transactions, you'll come back and look at this insights tab. You'll be seeing what has been displayed there. So we shall check out that insight tab from time to time as we keep on progressing with our course. But I know it will be very helpful and it will be able to give us a good picture of how things look like in, the, in our QuickBooks file. So that's all for the home screen because I wanted to take you through the home screen to be able to see some of those things. Now in, an, in our next video, we are going to be looking at the how are we going to be converting our QuickBooks desktop version to, uh, to an online version in QuickBooks. You may be creating that the same way we are creating this company file or KC group, but we want to transfer that. We are now shifting from using QuickBooks desktop and we are going to use QuickBooks online. So how are we, how are we, going, how are we going to convert that to an online version? That's what I just want to show you how to convert, but we are not going to basically work into QuickBooks online. Hope that one is okay. Thank you for watching. Let's meet in the next video.